when you create a correlation matrix like this, the idea is to find uh, you know, thank you very much. is to find um, variables, two variables that are highly correlated, and remove one of them. <coughs> and today I will try to explain why we do that. Um, as I was talking to somebody, data mining analytics, uh, AI is, is big and, you know, I, uh, I'm trying to help various schools and I'm, I'm working with, with Clark University in Worcester to try to help them with their data mining program that they're putting together. I'm just, uh, just advising that. <coughs> um, <coughs> so. Um, We talked about the correlation matrix last time. I defined what the heat map is. <coughs> um, the, by the way, if you try to print, instead of using a printer, uh, you try to print to one node. Let's see, print to one node. It puts this in one node. This is a PDF file, and it allows you to annotate. So, Um, so, the idea in a correlation matrix is if you have, uh, take, uh, so, Um, 
multipollinearity is one independent variable of the free system. These are, static. these are concepts from statistics, right? <coughs> um, now, Um, the um, I wanted to put up some formulas, but let me <coughs> instead go to uh, jump and demonstrate everything using jump. This is the jump file I am going to use. Thank you. The color handout that I gave you last time. Okay, um, we did <coughs> um, we did multivariate last time. Analyze multivariate methods, multivariate. <coughs> okay, um, and I selected the. All variables from chi to any dv, and I move them to y, all right? And then I click OK. Now you see this uh, matrix format, it's a square, lower, and upper. Uh, it will be less congested, uh, the output of the correlation covariance, if I say the lower or upper, uh, I said uh, square. But you will see what this means. Forward. And I click OK. If there is a, a non continuous variable, it will not use it, so I pick it up. <coughs> and um, you see this right here. Uh, in the output you have on the paper, oh, yeah. I called IT right after our lecture last time and I told them to fix this
the covariance show how they uh, move. Do they move together in a positive direction? So if you have um, if you have one variable going up and the other going up like this, they both move in the same direction. That is, this moves in a positive direction, this in a positive direction. So the covariance, okay, the covariance of x comma y is positive. <coughs> if they x and y, if they both move in the negative direction, negative, negative, the negative times negative, again, right? So this will be negative times negative. Again, the covariance will be positive. <coughs> um, if one goes up and the other goes down, so, right, when I say up, this is the x and the y axis, then, um, then the covariance will be negative because you have plus times minus. Also, if so, if, if this one goes down, if x goes down, <coughs> then y go up, goes up. What do I mean when I say go uh, down? Take a look at this this uh, this line, A, right? What does what does it say? That as x increases, so does y, right? If you go from point A point B, <coughs> right? X increases and Y increases. <coughs> Take a look at this picture. Let's say this is <coughs> um, C and D. Right? Okay, this is C, this is D. And when you go from C to D, right? What does this, um, <coughs> what does this uh, say? Uh, uh, if I look at both. But what I want to do, I want to take a look at what happens to x. x can increase and y can decrease, right? So <coughs> um, covariance is negative. So altogether, what I want you to know is this. <coughs> um, covariance, covariance tells us about the direction of the relationship, the direction Okay. of the linear relationship, when we say relationship, we're talking about linear, right? Of the linear relationship between x and y. <coughs> between x and y. It doesn't help us at all with the strength of that relationship. So the covariance tells us only about the direction not the strength of a linear relationship, not the strength. Professor? Yes, sir. So what does like a bigger number mean? <coughs> it means that um, the bigger the, the covariance, it means that if the number is, uh, uh, if the, uh, let's say the covariance is 400, and then because covariance is unbounded, and then it becomes 500, 600. It means that the two have a much closer relationship, so they move up fast, faster together. <coughs> okay? <coughs> and what is faster? If you have this line, one line is like this. Y equals, let's say, to 2x. And you have this line, y equals 3x. Which line shows you things going faster? 3x. <coughs> so the higher the number, the steeper the, the line. If the covariance <coughs> is negative, it means you have a line. See, this is the line right here, right? Let's say that this is y equals to negative 2x. And covariance may be uh, so, it, it, so, so if the line goes like this, this says as x increases, what happens to y? Decreases. So the, the, the high 
the if the covariance is negative 400 and then it becomes negative 600 what this is saying is that this line will become even steeper you understand so <clears throat> and I want to show it to you with with the, the lines instead of just uh, basically what it's saying is that um, as one goes down faster the other one will go up faster or as one goes up see here if you go from this point a to this point b all right if you if you look at the first graph right this line goes down but if you look at this graph this guy this line goes down even faster that means the covariance with the second line will be bigger in terms of negative okay very good question <coughs> now so the covariance tells you um, about the direction only. If I want to know about both the direction of the relationship and the strength, I need to look at the correlation coefficient. Now, this is the covariance formula for the population. It's actually very easy to calculate. This is the covariance formula for the sample. <coughs> um, now, the <coughs> here is the correlation, the correlation coefficient for um, this is the correlation coefficient for two variables, <coughs> and this is the correlation for uh, coefficient for a population. This is the Greek letter rho, and this is the correlation coefficient for a sample. With the covariance over this. When you divide the covariance by this product in the population of the sum, what is it that you are doing? Sorry? Say it. Yes. <coughs> that, <coughs> and this is called the normalizing factor of this denominator. Because See, the covariance, the covariance is unbounded. It can go from, so sorry, it can go from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? Where is um, R or rho? R is between negative one and positive one. You have normalized. So it's between negative one and one. <coughs> and so you see the covariance and the correlation and the correlation are related like that, right? Correlation is covariance normalized. <coughs> and we want to normalize things because when you normalize things via standardizing, via reducing the scale to zero to one, via this is another way to normalize. <coughs> okay? Because now that it is bound between negative two numbers, <coughs> we can, we can, uh, we can, and we can control it. See if uh, R is in the sample positive one. That tells us two things. The positive tells us about the direction, and the one tells us <coughs> that the dots are perfect. If R is 0.8, if R is 0.8, then the dots is plus 0.8, then the dots are close to the line. The lower the R, the farther away the dots are from the line. It is also, if R is negative 1, that means the line, so if R is negative 1, okay, the negative says the line goes down this way, and the one says that the dots are So if R is negative 0.8, okay, negative 0.8, then the line will go down, right, like this, and the dots are close to the line. So, okay. so R tells you both about the direction 
value is greater than this number, this is one way to say that a linear relationship, whenever you see a relationship here, it means linear relationship, is, if, if, the, if the absolute value is greater than this, where small is the sample size, then um, you have a, a significant relationship, linear relationship between the two variables. When r is zero, there's no linear relationship. Um, the variance, I talked about the covariance being um, positive. So the covariance, the covariance can be positive. And this means, I told you what this means. Negative, I told you what this means, right? And if it is equal to zero, that means no linear relationship exists between the two. So this here says that the two <coughs> Uh, variables x and y, they either both go up or they both go down. So the negative covariance means x goes up, means that they, they, they go in opposite directions. One goes up, the other goes down. <coughs> okay. Um, here are examples of various values of r, okay, negative 0.8. You see you can throw a, a, a horizontal line between them. When they start to get punched up, sometimes it's difficult to see if the direction is up or down. When they are, see right here, you can say, well, I can draw a line like this or a, line like, or a line like that. Uh, this is r equal to zero. They are too spread out. <coughs> r equals to one. That's what I mean. R equals to 0.8. You see, R equal to 0.8 and R equal to negative 0.8. Which one has a stronger linear relationship? This uh, A or B? E? <coughs> okay. In terms of the strength, the directions are different, but here the dots are as close to the line as they are here. Excellent. <coughs> so you see this R equal to 0.4 and R equal to negative 0.4. It's kind of tough to see if the relationship is negative or positive, right? So when it gets close to this, maybe the software will tell you. <coughs> okay. Um, a very good example, we have the colored um, uh, diagram. Uh, 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 I want you to go to page uh, 12, because I want you you see, this is the diagram in the book, this is color. And um, I want to do this with um, jump. Okay? And uh, once again, we are doing uh, dimension reduction. So, um, I can have these few things open as possible. So on page 12, So, um, <coughs> I am um, on page 12 of 36 there, and um, it says to create the tabulation and stack bar graph in 4.7, which is that color picture that is on your color handout you see on page 16. Right, to create that color output on page 16. <coughs> um, one of the things we want to do is click on zone, and you see number one on page 12, change the modeling type for zone to number. So you can right click on it and say number. And you see how the color of that picture changes. And, and you will see why. <coughs> but then it says in tabulate. Well, I click analyze. Uh, tabulate. Okay. <clears throat> Click analyze tabulate and drag cat.mindividual to the drop zone for color. 
there are two different ways to do tabulate. On page 12, it shows you the dialog box. Um, and, um, <clears throat> and on page 13, it shows you the interactive table. I am going to use the interactive table um, approach on page 13. So I'm looking at one on page 11 and two on page 11. In tabulation, you don't have tabulate. Um, you drag uh, cat.metv and you put it where it says drag zone for columns, as you see on page 13. <clears throat> okay? And then drag the zone to the drop zone for rows. Then uh, drag um, row percent. I'm looking still on page 12. You drag under the statistics there. We say n mean you drag row percent into the resulting cells, and you should have the picture on page 14. Okay. So do you guys see the picture on page 14? <clears throat> now, on, at the bottom of page 14, um, um, under table, um, I'm sorry, at the top of page 14 where it says tabulate, click the red triangle and pick make into data table. And you have a data table that looks like on page the graph builder icon okay, or click um, uh, uh, graph graph builder right <coughs> um, and um, you you see the So basically, right, you click graph, 
And you move the zone on the x-axis. You drag it. And then, uh, oh, 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 it's, uh, I had to move out. Page 15. You open Graph Builder. Okay, you are looking at the table called Untitled 2, right? That has a three-column zone, row percent, and row percent zero, row percent one, right? You have that. <coughs> you go to Graph Builder. You drag zone to the X zone, and drag row percent columns. Select both the row percent columns, row percent zero, row percent one. Basically, that says. If you look at zone 12.5, in, in, in that zone, 100% uh, of the homes are away from the chaps. <coughs> okay. uh, zero and one, near, I'm sorry, um, zero means the house is, the price of the house is less than 30,000, one means it's more than, okay. So in zone 12.5, 100% of the houses uh, are uh, less than uh, uh, 30,000. And yeah, in zone 17.5, let's something up. In zone 20, 23.81 of the houses are cheaper than $30,000. And 76.90% are the median value is higher than that. Okay. <coughs> so, you move zone to the x-axis and you, do, you click on, you, you select both row percent zero and row percent one. And you can do this uh, on the left where it says column. And you drag them and drop them on the y zone at the same time. <coughs> and then above, while you are here, right? Let's see. Um, and then click on the bar icon at the top. Okay. <clears throat> and then you will see what you see on page 16. Is everybody with me? Right. <clears throat> what does this say? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, we need to do something else. And looking at the left, where it says, um, you see it says zone, row percent zero, row percent one, under the variables and the column. And then under bar, under uh, click to the right of bar style and pick stack so you can see the picture the color picture on page 16. <coughs> now, <coughs> if you look at that, zones, 17.5, it's all red. That means 100% <coughs> of the homes in that zone are, a, are um, worth more than 10,000. So if you look at zone 17.5, 9, 95, and 100, they're all going to be the same, right? See these bars? 17.5, 90, 95, and 100, they all look the same. <coughs> I want to combine them into one. And also you can look at zones 12.5, 25, 28, 30, and 70, <coughs> and those look the same. 12.5, right? 25, right? They look the same. I can group all of this in one zone. And all of these, 17.5995, under another zone. So, <clears throat> what we can do, go to page, um, at, the, at the bottom of page 16, okay, and looking at this uh, table, Untitled 2, 
click columns and then recall. Alright, so if you should be looking at the table what I'm titled to that has these three columns, zone, row percent zero, row percent one. <coughs> okay? And when you click recall, then you get a picture at the, at the top of page 17. See that? <coughs> so when you get that picture, this picture right here, what you can do uh, for, um, these are the values that the table has. Uh, we'll just do one. Uh, replace 12.5, 25, 28, 30, and 70 with the number one. And then replace, you see, uh, looking on page 16, you replace 17.5, the new value, 90, 95, and 100 with the number two. We are reducing dimension. You follow me? You understand what I'm saying? Who does not understand what I'm saying? <coughs> so, uh, you see these zones, 12.5, 25, 28. I already put the one there. I want to merge five zones into one. <coughs> okay. So make those changes, <coughs> and then when you click done, when you click done, it will give you a bunch of options. Pick my comments there in the middle of the page, page 17, and uh, it says done, but uh, uh, under when you click done, pick uh, change the my writing there. It should say uh, pick formula column. Click done and pick underneath formula column. All right. And then <coughs> the table will look like this. You will have zone two. We can rename it probably blah blah blah. <coughs> and then it will look like this to the left with the plus. Okay. <coughs> so you guys have the zone two column. <coughs> um, question? I don't have the done. Uh, but it just says recall. You should have it. Uh, uh, you know what? You may be using 14. Right. Yeah. So if you click the code underneath, does it say uh, formula column? Uh, no, it just puts the column there. To the table. All right. So <coughs> just say recall. Okay. That's probably, I used 13. This was under 13 point something. This is 14. Okay, so basically, you have this column here, okay? What I want to do next, depending on if you recorded the 12.5 the group, um, <coughs> so if you take this plus sign, then you will see the formula that is used. So basically here, I recorded only these guys and I, I, I just made them all one. So instead of 12.5, you want to be put 1, 25, 1, 28, 1, all of these down become 1. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five zones will collapse into 1. Okay. <coughs> um, and then, what you want to do, as before, you want to, uh, uh, you want to, uh, to go into Graph Builder. So while you are looking at this, you want to click Graph, Graph Builder, or click this button, this is the Graph Builder. Clicking this is the same as clicking Graph, Graph Builder. <coughs> and you want to drag and drop Zone 2 on the x-axis. Okay. And then click both of these, row percent 0, row percent 1, and put them on the y-axis. And you will see, you see this one right here? This replaced five different buttons. Dimension.
this is basically a time series. The new graph or in the x-axis you have date and time. Um, so uh, this is year and quarter. So this here is quarter two. This is quarter three. This is quarter four. This is quarter one.
the, uh, the other table, has, this is the file that has all the columns. <coughs> Um, you see here the name of the cereal, the manufacturer, uh, C if it's a cold cereal, H if it's a hot cereal, uh, the calories, the protein, um, the fat. <coughs> now you should also notice, right, um, <coughs> that uh, some of these sodium, which are like sodium calories, these are in milligrams. Like potassium. These are milligrams, and some, some of the columns, the units are in milligrams, and some are in grams. And then you have rain. So you see some of the numbers are small, uh, they are in grams, and some are in milligrams. And you see different units, or some of the numbers small, some are big. What are you supposed to do? Normalize. Let's proceed without normalize. <coughs> okay. So, I am looking at this file right here, because I want to simplify uh, the problem. <coughs> okay, you have your columns here, all right? Um, and we have these two um, columns, calories and rate. Okay, <coughs> um, on page um, 21, you have the metadata, metadata uh, means data about the data, a column name, a description of the column, but you should have more. And you see how uh, sugars are in grams, sodium is in milligrams. All right? So <clears throat> we need, the proper thing to do is to normalize, because otherwise the bigger numbers will force the uh, result to go in their direction. So right now we're just looking at calories and ratings. Calories is the one, two, three column at the top. Calories per serving. Ratings is the rating as uh, done by consumer reports. <coughs> okay. Um, on page 22, I can do analyze uh, distribution to get some idea about the distribution of the data. All right. <coughs> and, uh, and so I select um, uh, the two numeric columns, calories, and a rating, I put them in Y columns, I click OK, and we have this. <coughs> um, and you can click under calories and display, uh, I think, uh, one tiles as well, one tiles, and uh, also oh, under distributions. If I stack, if I say stack, it shows it to you uh, this way. Um, you can, uh, so you see the histogram, okay, and then you see the box plot. The red line above means this is where the concentration lies. <coughs> um, you see here, this looks skewed to the right, but if you look at the median, the median is 40, and the mean is 42. When the mean is greater than the median, it's skewed to the right. And then um, you see the, the mean is, um, if you connect, um, uh, this, uh, from, this is a rhombus, you connect these two lines that gives you the mean, and this other is the median. <coughs> okay. So you can see that the box to the right of the median is bigger than the box to the left, that means right skew. And we talked about the minimum right skew, there's a few values, like here to the right, that have a low frequency, right? And that moves, that tends to make the mean go in that direction. We're doing analytics. <coughs> Up here, the the median. Oh, I didn't do one quantiles, so I can do calories display quantiles for that, and I can get this information. <coughs> so it is not a space. That proves the point. <coughs> um, um, so. Now at this point, I And I will view this video to write the whole thing. I will ask you to watch it. <laughs> what better proof? <clears throat> um, 
then I'm going to get in trouble again. Because the other day, I yelled about people taking my issues, and they called the police on me. Yeah, the police came to my office. Somebody there. Somebody there. And they said, do you want me to close the door? I said, no, don't close it. Anyways, I went back. I yelled at some people. I went back and I apologized to those people. <coughs> Matthew was there. <coughs> and, 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 and again, I see they're still they're taking my other business. One was outside of the dean's office. One was at uh, Dodge. So at this pace, I will be locked up. We will have the class online. <laughs> Okay. Please stick with me. I apologize. Um, <clears throat> well, at the bottom of page 22, I said, I said, get the covariance and correlation. And <clears throat> uh, there are different ways. On page uh, 23, um, with uh, looking at this table, right, uh, you, I click analyze, analyze multivariate methods, multivariate. And <clears throat> Okay, and then I, uh, uh, and you see here, you see when I, uh, when I click analyze multivariate, multivariate, you see the option to do principal right? <coughs> so, um, but I want to do multivariate, all right, and, um, <coughs> and I, uh, I want to, to uh, to grab the two numerical columns, calories and ratings, select them, move them under Y columns, click OK, and <clears throat> you see here, you see the uh, correlation on the paper. <clears throat> you see the correlation uh, matrix. <clears throat> okay, and right underneath it, uh, you see the uh, covariance uh, matrix as well. Um, On the red triangle under multivariate, I uh, there is the covariance matrix. Right. So you have both <coughs> the <coughs> covariance and the correlation. Here, negative 0.6894 and negative. This is the correlation. What does this tell you? What is the meaning of this number? But, but what does it mean? Let's say you wanted to tell this uh, to a cousin of yours who's brilliant but knows nothing about analytical statistics. How would you explain? Um, as calories go up, and calories go down. Exactly. Does this make sense? Yes. Very neat, right? Now, um, here, now another thing, 
the sign of the covariance and the sign of the correlation are the same. If covariance is positive, correlation will be positive. If covariance is negative, correlation will be negative, right? After all, one is the normalized version of the other, so the signs should be the same. <coughs> this is the covariance matrix. Uh, what is uh, the meaning of P79? This is the covariance between calories and calories. The covariance of calories with calories is called what? The values. <coughs> so here you have, um, here you have, between rating and calories, right? And so the covariance of calories in rating is the same as the covariance of rating and calorie is negative one point. Negative, I'm sorry, negative one point. You see the negative uh, correlation of negative covariance. Now, the total variance here is 576. Point something, 577. <coughs> okay. Um, what percent of the variance is the variance of calories? So the variance of calories, right? The variance of calories is. 379 over 577 over 577 and that is 66 percent so this is equal to 66 percent <coughs> the variance the percent of the variance S of X and the square root of this is S of Y. Right? 
next green color is y green color. <clears throat> this is a very nice description. Okay. Now, if you look at um, this scattered book right here, and here I have two values, calories and grades. I recommend to all of you to take a course in linear algebra. I have been fighting to put this course in business school.
So this one and two could be under a column called V, one, two, and the two-dimensional space. And then you have this other four, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's say that that's over there. Let's see, now, <coughs> what I can do, I can, <coughs> um, if I look at these two columns, are these two columns a uh, If you want, they are not, right? That means when you see the vectors here, that means that there's some sort of relation between the two. There's some, some sort of dependence between the two. If I initially I have these two vectors, v1, v2, all this x, this x1, 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 x2, all this one. Or you can call this x1, you call this x2. So initially, you may have x1 variables and x2. Right? And this can be calories, this can be radians. And they and they're not and they're not perpendicular. They're not independent fully. Um, and when I look at uh, this, when I look at this right here, <coughs> you see that um, <coughs> you see that. Uh, how the graph um, looks like. I talked about the weighted average last time. And um, I talked about the weighted average. I'm going slow because I want, I want you to, <coughs> and I wish I could do um, a linear algebra. <coughs> X1 and X2. These are the initial variables, calories and radius. <coughs> uh, PCA generates principal component C1, which is some weight. I'm going to call this A times X1 plus some other weight of this A1. Some, this A1 is a constant. A2 times X2. <coughs> and it creates, these are called principal components, C1 and C2. And PCA uh, uh, generates this other uh, principal component, C2, which is uh, A3 times X1 plus A4 times x <coughs> and these guys, C1 and C2, are <coughs> Whenever you have the particular variables, these are the best variables to use, and these are called independent variables, fully independent variables. One of them is a weight average of the initial variables, x1 and x. Now, <coughs> um, so, so this would be z1 and this would be z2. And if you look, you see most of the dots are around z1. <coughs> z1. Most of the variance. Another word for variance that I want you to know is information. Variance and information mean the same thing. Why is variance called information? 
because it shows you how the data is spread. <coughs> okay, so if you look here, right, you look that, you see that um, C1 will have a higher variance than C2 because most of the data is spread around Z1. Look at Z2, the data is not, Z2 doesn't have uh, a lot of, the distribution is smaller than the distribution of Z1, right? <coughs> okay, so let us do, let us use jump to do PCA. So I have right here <coughs> and I will go to analyze a, a multivariate methods principal components <coughs> I will <coughs> I will take uh, calories and rating and I will put them under Y columns well, I'm sorry, so sorry. I, I want to move calories under um, where it says uh, X is calories, move X. Okay, I use, uh, I use 13. Let me click on Convenience. 
you see here, you see where this eigen value and it has 498 and 79. <coughs> um, let me let me take some other things. The principal correlations, actually I don't need that. Uh, covariance matrix, and I get my covariance matrix to show up, right? Um, I want to click principal components icon values, and I get my icon values, which are actually these numbers. I click principal components, and I get icon vectors. These are named after Dr. Icon, a German uh, that's brilliant, but he did. <coughs> and, um, also, so I'm on page 29, and also, finally, those things that I This is my table. Okay. I have these three columns, and if I say here, principal, and I say, say, principal components, Right? This is best by the number of components to say two, three, two, and these are my C1 and C2, green one, green two. <coughs> okay. Um, now, so now you have this output here. Okay. So now you have this output here. <coughs> this is post. If you remember <coughs> the initially you have the variance of calories plus the variance of rating, right? Is 577. Remember? So Uh, two eigenvalues, 
is this is <coughs> the total variance after we do uh, PCA, and that is the same as the one before. But that is the difference now. <coughs> you see, I can have the percent shown here, and. 498 over 577 is 86.13%. Right here. When it says component 1, that is Z1. Component 2, this is Z2. And this is the 13.7%. <coughs> what? It, it, so when you have initially, you have calories and weight. Okay? Um, the <coughs> or x and y, x1 is x2. <coughs> um, when I find the phrase covariance, that means that calories in the data, the variance of calories is influenced by the variance of ratings. <coughs> so if I uh, uh, if this is the total variance, right? <coughs> um, the variance of calories is what? 66%. What does it say? What is, what is the meaning of that? <coughs> it says that 66% of... <coughs> um, see, when, when you have this two, right? <coughs> we are trying to... We have this too. We are, if we were doing linear regression, we were, we are trying, we would try to predict the rating from calories. Okay. Now in this case it's simple. <coughs> so this says that the variance, 66% um, of that relationship is a, of that relation between the two is explained by calories alone. And the other 34% is from the ratings. So the two of them together explain everything. This is not so realistic in life because in real life instead of having, you know, uh, uh, you have ratings, you have calories, you have uh, sugar, potassium, many, many other things. <coughs> now, um, <coughs> When we do PCA, um, L1, see L1 corresponds to Z1, <coughs> and L2 corresponds to Z2. By the way, it is not a coincidence that uh, L1, lambda 1, right, is the highest number. When it creates these higher values, it puts them in decreasing order. The one with the highest value first, then the second one with the second highest value, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, just like that. <coughs> so, this is done on purpose. <coughs> and um, and so, um, so, Component one, and this is 
0.84 and then this is a value of 0.84, negative 0.83. These are these numbers here. <coughs> so, <coughs> uh, the, the, these guys right here, <coughs> so you have um, a, a, these numbers here are weights. Remember the A1, A2, A3, A4, A4? This is where they come from. These are weights. <coughs> okay? And so, um, I go vector 1. I go vector 1. That's what I call this one. It's point 0.84, negative point 0.53. And the other vector, I go vector 2, is point 0.53 and point 0.84. Now, here you have on page, uh, the page, the page one, at this table here, and there's a way to make these numbers bigger. <coughs> you have it in front of you. <coughs> Up here, Here. Um, Z2 is 
is <coughs> you will now use these weights because we do those with zero, right? So this will be 0.53 times 70 minus 106.88 um, plus 0 0.847 times 68.4 minus this. And this is the 2.19. That's this. <coughs> so we took we took a Z1 uses both of these numbers, and it takes a weight of this, a weight times this, and another weight times that, and you get this negative 40. <coughs> what is, um, and, and Z1, Z1 <coughs> has a lambda 1 equal to uh, 498, <coughs> which corresponds to the 86.13% of all variability, right? <coughs> and the Z2, which corresponds to lambda 2, which is 78, which corresponds to 14.7% of the variability, okay? When I say variability, Okay. This is the total variance, which is 577. And the question is this. The question is this. <coughs> uh, do I need both Z1 and Z2? Am I happy with 86.5? 30%. Am I happy with having solved 86% of the case? If the total variance represents a legal case and I solve 86%, am I happy with it? And many times the answer is yes. <coughs> so, the answer is if we are happy with 86.13%, and then we only need Z1, right? And we can do away with Z2. <coughs> so initially, initially, we had two variables, x1 and x2. We do principal component analysis, and we only need one variable. What is great to know about C1 and C2 <coughs> is that uh, if you look at the weights, you see these this weights right here. <coughs> the eigenvectors, the eigenvectors are the weights. If I multiply V1 times V2, <coughs> which is 0.847, negative 0.53, times 0 0.53, 0 0.847, multiply this times that, and then, so it's 0.847 times 0.53, plus negative 0.53, and 0.847 and this. <coughs> and what this means, we have done all of this. Okay, what was x1? 
if you take x1 70 with all the values and take x2 and take this value, if you multiply x1 and x2 as vectors, it's not going to be used. So instead of using x1 and x2, we have found much better variables, z1 and z2, that are, uh, uh, that are independent, and use them instead of using x1 and x2. <coughs> and Variables. So if I do analyze multivariate municipal components <coughs> and I use all of these guys, all right, um, very quickly, all we need to look at is this. You see this right here? <coughs> these are the agon values. <coughs> so, <coughs> um, uh, this is um, uh, this is a, 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 a cumulatively <coughs> um, the, this tells you that um, <coughs> this tells you <coughs> that. <coughs> C1 uses 72 uh, 07 variants, Z2 4961, Z3 498, Z4. So if I use, and Z1 is about 56%, Z2 is about 39%, Z3 is 11. If I use Z1 and Z2, only two principal components, instead of initially having 13 independent variables, I am uh, because if I use these two, 56 plus 37 is about something like 92, 92 percent. Uh, and using two principal components, Z1 and Z2, is enough. Um, and I can do my study only with Z1 and Z2 instead of using these 13 independent variables. So, yeah. Maybe you can use it depends on how, on how close to 100 you want to get. You know what I'm saying? So, that's it.